Hello, we're John and Stacey, um, and we're bringing you the weekly encouragement on the 18th of May, 21, um, following Esther's talk on missional discipleship. Esther said the essence of being a disciple is to make disciples, and we've been churning that around for a few mm. days now. Um, discipleship without mission isn't discipleship, it isn't being a, a disciple as we're called to be. Um, we're to be strengthened by others and to strengthen others. Uh, discipleship is an outpouring of Jesus. Um, so we're passionate about meeting people where they're at, yeah. uh, as that's had such an impact on our journey, both positive and negative at times. Um, getting alongside people with no agenda, other than being in relationship with them, loving them and getting to know them, as we're loved Um our natural interactions, conversations um, and actions show the love, grace and mercy that's been poured out on us. But we all know somebody um, who is willing to cut you off and tell you exactly what you need to do in a situation, where you've gone wrong, uh, what your next step should be. Um, without knowing your full situation at all, without knowing your feelings or your backstory, um, I call them a one pot fixer. And we all know how annoying that person's response can be and how that person might make you feel and how the next time you find yourself in a situation, you might avoid that person. And I'm sure that person has no ill intention. They're doing what they think is best to help you. Um, that, you know, they know what you need, but actually it's just really unhelpful. And as Christians, we know that the answer to pretty much every problem is Jesus but we wouldn't be meeting people where they're at if we just threw the Bible at them and a man that they don't yet know as to be the answer to their problems. And for some people, um, that that might be okay, but most people need to build knowledge, relationship and trust um, in, in order to, to, to see that as the answer to their problems. So we need to be in relationship to find common ground, connections and interests to build relationship. We need to be quick to listen and slow to speak, um, as Jesus was. But John and I are doing the um, marriage course with the church at the moment. And we have realised um, that actually communication isn't as straightforward as we thought it was. Yeah, um, it can be hard, can't it? Yeah. Got to work at it. Yeah, definitely got to work at it. And, you know, sometimes... Um, listening and being slow to respond doesn't come natural. It's, you have to work at that and, and weigh that. Um, and as Esther shared, it's not always about just sharing the gospel. It's about laying our lives down for others and, and giving our time and, and, and being willing to, to listen and stop. Um, so we can listen to someone's life story or someone's current problem or somebody's recurring persistent problem. And we can become annoyed or hardened or judgmental and um, thinking, oh, well, why should I give them any of my time? I gave them advice last time and they didn't take it. They're just making the same mistakes over and over. Um, but imagine if Jesus saw your sin like that, your recurring sin. Um, I know I can come before Jesus with my muck minute by minute and he's still going to embrace me with the same amount of forgiveness love and compassion as he did the first time he's going to do it again and again and again and yet we can be so intolerant of other people's situations specifically um especially with our brothers and sisters in christ we haven't grasped the gospel you're not praying enough you're not praying effectively you're not in the word enough you're not walking in your god-given identity all of those things which may well be true. But when you're standing over somebody instead of beside them, you're not you're not helping them grow. You're not meeting them where they're at. Mm. So we're not to judge one another, but to love one another and to ask the father to give us more patience, compassion and grace for one another. 2 Timothy 4, 2 tells us to preach the word, be ready in season and out of season reprove, rebuke and exhort with complete patience and teaching. So in our judgmental nature, we need to ask God to prune our branches so that we might bear more fruit. 
Esther said, people don't care about what you know until they know about how much you care. Man, how, how true is that? That's such a lesson in love. Um, it's taking an interest and, and engaging in a two-way relationship. And that's, that's how you show love. 1 Peter 4, 8 to 10 reads, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. And each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So go on that dog walk with that person you met in the park or invite that mum or dad in for a cuppa and a chat using your gift of hospitality or bake your neighbour a cake or mow their side of the lawn even though they never mow your side of the lawn um, or help the guy down the road put up his Ikea flat pack because that's quite the task. That's going to show them love. Yeah, meeting people where they're at and serving their needs is um, an example that G Jesus made to all of us and um, to love your neighbour as yourself. It's going against the grain of um, much of the world today where um, we're reaching out to help someone and giving your time to, to reach out and help someone serving them is visibly different from, uh, from a culture of self-serving where mm. every man's for himself. Um, this makes people question uh, why and what is going on here and what is it about this person? What's different about them that makes them want to help me when they don't have to at the mm. end of the day? Um, in do, doing so, we're also serving God and um, he can use that to change people's lives. We just have to have more of a heart to give up time um, to do so more. Yeah, like Esther said, you know, sometimes giving people time to be heard is what people have needed and um, is what's needed. And, and sometimes... Um, by giving people the chance also to be able to give that love back in response is also I think what, what people need from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, an example of, of that is uh, Stacy recently was out walking with a friend a couple of weeks ago and um, on the way home she came across a guy on his back in a, in a bush off the, off the footpath and it's pretty obvious he'd had a few drinks and and um, couldn't make it home and um, yeah it was obvious there was there was a need there for this guy and she had compassion for him and she offered uh, she offered help from her husband from me and um, called me and uh, yeah I had compassion immediately for him and wanted to help this guy and thought yeah you know let's get him home and um, yeah when I caught up with her and and took over and helped him to his feet. Then he gave a bit, bit of his story, a bit of his background, and um, yeah, meeting him where he was at, I found out that you know he'd been up for a walk and had a few drinks, and and hadn't made it home. And so helping him get back halfway, halfway back home to his, he sort of turned to me and he sort of stared at me and sort of said, "Why would you help me? Why would you do that? You know, what what are you doing it for?" And I was just honest with him and just said, look, you know, that's what friends are for. And if I was in your position, which to be honest, I have mm -hmm. I have been quite a few times and nobody else has helped me there. Mm -hmm. um, if I was in your position, I would want someone to help me. And um, he sort of took that on board and um, yeah, he gave me a bit more of his story. And then I realised, you know, that he'd actually got a few problems I think and um, maybe it wasn't just a one-off but it was a recurring sort of thing and once I got him home his wife sort of thanked me and and said you know I, if I hadn't stopped and helped him she doesn't, doesn't know who would, who would and how he would have got home so sometimes it is just um, reaching out and and stepping out and helping someone uh, whatever their need may be you know it's only you know it's small bit of time for me but it made a big difference for that man and um, yeah I feel prompted more now especially after Sunday to pray for more opportunities to to meet with people and, and also pray for more opportunity to to meet with this guy again and I hope I do so to, to find out more of his story um, another example of um, of praying for opportunity to get alongside people is um, how we came to meet a good friend of ours, Mark. Um, we used to see him about and 
and I don't know, felt a bit of a heart for this guy and uh, prayed to have an opportunity to, to know more of him. And, and we did, and he, he lives close by to us and someone who discounts himself a lot and mm. um, doesn't see himself as um, someone who's deserving of, of a lot of the compassion and love we're talking about. But um, yeah, in getting to know him, um, which is a pleasure because he's a great guy mm. and, and spending time with him, we've got to know more of, of what he's about and, and he's got to know more of what we're about and actually um, he's got more of a heart for God now he's he's, uh, he's someone who previously had a hardened heart very much to God and and now he wants to know more about God and that doesn't have to be you know so intentional at first but it's about building community with people and um, getting alongside people where you're, you've got a two-way relationship like Stacey said of, of looking out for each other mm. um, yeah, so giving him time and, and showing him a love, he's, he's now um, has more of a heart that's softened to God, which is a great thing. I like what Esther uh, said also about um, Jesus asking questions, uh, like Stacey said, being quick to listen and, and slow to speak. And even though he he probably knew the answers to a lot of his questions he was asking, he still wanted to, to make time to slow it down and know more about people to, to get alongside them and get on a level of, of mutual interest and, and respect and um, yeah I think that's what we need to do and in do so um, show more compassion for where people are, are at and and their needs also. Mm. Yeah um, as John said um, praying for opportunity and um, for God to use us when we pray for an opportunity to meet with somebody God will always provide it um, we just need to be responsive um, and we were talking about how being around faithful people uh, builds faith and inspires you and encourages you to push further. Um, well, I'm inspired after Sunday. Um, I loved Esther's story of her throwing flyers um, yeah. from the, the top of the stairs in college. If, if you know Esther, you can really imagine her doing that. <laughs> um, and though I'm not going to run upstairs, uh, with some alpha flyers and throw them out the window a because i'm not a fan of littering um but you know i am going to be um praying for an opportunity uh, to meet with new people i am going to be responsive to the holy spirit and i am going to be um generous with my time mm. yeah. um romans 1 16 to 17 says for i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew and then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Yeah, and not everyone will like uh, the fact that we follow Jesus and bring the good news of gospel and want to make uh, such a positive difference around us. Um, but Jesus has made all the difference in our lives and if we want the best for the people around us then he is what they need in their lives to make the world a difference mm. and um, yeah so it's about being ready to give that account we have in the hope we have in God and Jesus and, and being ready to give that account when the opportunity is there um, you know that account that was mentioned by Stacey you know from 1 Peter 4 um, so yeah, when we have those opportunities, we should take them because um, yeah, it can be life changing for others. Mm -hmm. So can we encourage you, um, not just this week, but in your walk with God, um, to be missional in your discipleship and to ask God for a passion to share over a duty to share? Because it's our calling as Christians to love God above all, but to love our neighbour. Um, so do be praying for opportunities and, 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 and praying for a boldness, for, for a change in heart. You might already be great at doing that, um, but I think we, we all need to pray for, for more of that. Um, so do pray this week, see what God does. And, and you know, if you have any, um, any opportunities to share or meetings with people, just perhaps email it into the church and encourage, let's encourage each other 
um, to be more missional. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, thanks for listening to our ramblings and take God, care. God bless you all. Take care.